everyone. Welcome to our channel, Rebecca Stew and the crew. I'm Rebecca, and today we have part two of the Patriotic Craft Ideas for 2023. Part one I showed last week with these four ideas for y'all. So let's get started going over the supplies for our projects this week. From Dollar Tree, we are going to be needing 15 of the large craft sticks. We're also going to use some red, white, and blue paint. Any brand will do. Some paint brushes. We'll need hot glue, scissors, also some wire. I'm going to use this wire that's found over by the tools at the Dollar Tree in a three pack, some raffia. We're also going to be using some twine and some ribbon. Also, we'll need a pencil, some paper, and I'm going to use the wood burning tool to make holes in the wood. So let's get crafty. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to paint our craft stick. So I always put some paper underneath of it because I am going to be painting the sides and the back, but while the sides are drying, and just because I'm a sloppy painter, when I paint the sides of the craft sticks, I always put something underneath of it, but you wanna make sure you cover the whole thing because you will be able to see all the different angles. Now, the first one that I did, I actually glued it together before I painted it, which made it a little bit more difficult. So I definitely recommend painting all of the sticks first and then going back in to glue it all together. And again, you want to do the back and the front. Um, if you wanna do two coats, that's really up to you. It just depends on how much coverage you want. So now I lay my craft sticks out in the shape of a star and then I trace the corners onto a piece of paper. That's just to make sure that when I glue the angles together that they're at the right angle and that I am able to um, make sure that it looks like a star when I'm done. If you just kind of eyeball it, you might put it a little too far open and then the pieces won't join together. So it's just easier if you have this little guide to work with. And I just kind of glue them on one piece at a time. Sometimes I'll glue right on top and then I'll take maybe the top portion of the next one and slide it under the craft stick just so we get the over kind of under look and it doesn't look like we just did a star with one craft stick right on top of the next. It just kind of looks a little bit different that way. But I just glue all the corners together. Sometimes if the craft sticks are a little bit curved, because sometimes they are curved, you'll want to put a little bit of glue underneath of the sides and then push down to help hold the sticks together just because of that bend in the stick. You might not need to do that to any of them or you might need to do it to a few of them. It's really just depends on the craft sticks that you're working with or how much paint sometimes is absorbed by the wood that might make them bend a little bit too. So now we have all of our um, stars glued together and the template here that we made by drawing the corners was nice because then all the stars are about the same size so they look more uniform. Next we're going to be making some bows to decorate the front of the uh, stars that we made. So I had this leftover ribbon cut from a different project, but it's a little bit too wide. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that right up the center and then we'll cut these in half. So I ended up with about a two and a half inch piece of ribbon and then we're going to dovetail the ends. And we'll need two pieces for each of the stars that we're going to make. So all we're going to do is put a little dot of glue in the middle fold the bow over and then we'll fold the two ends backwards so it's kind of like a fan fold this one didn't want to stick sometimes the glue will go all the way through the burlap ribbon so you're able to do just the one little dot of glue in the center and sometimes you'll have to add a little bit more glue to the side to make sure that it stays so again you're just taking a piece of ribbon put a dot in the center fold it over and then fold the sides backwards and just give it a little pinch in the middle and it should stick together. If it doesn't, just add a little bit more glue. So we're using two pieces for each star. So we'll glue those two pieces together to make the bow a little bit larger. These are super simple to make and you can make these larger sizes for different projects. So if you're ever looking for like a really easy bow to make, this is the way. So now we're going to take some raffia and we're going to add just a few strands to the front and a few strands to the back of that bow that we just made and we're going to attach it using like a slip knot over top of the bow and that just helps to get it attached quickly so that you can tie a knot and you don't have to try to wrestle with all that raffia so I like to use that technique to tie 
when I'm using raffia and a bow. It's just a quick way to attach it and free up your hand so you can finish tying off the bow. If you need to trim up the raffia a little bit, you can if it's too long. But I'd like to have it just a little bit longer than the original bow. And then we're going to take some hot glue and glue that right across the top here. The bow has those fan folds. So you might need to push down on the bow to make sure that it's sticking to the craft wood below. And we'll do the same thing to all three bows except for uh, the project that I'm doing. I have that different color raffia, so I'm able to switch out the colors for each color star. So for the white star, I used a red raffia, and then the red star, I used the blue. Dollar Tree from time to time will sell these different colors of raffia. I know in the fall they'll have the orange, brown, yellow, and green. And then usually in the summer, they'll carry the red, white, and blue from time to time. So they're pretty big rolls and you only need a little bit for lots of craft projects. I've had one skein of raffia last me over a year. So there's the red one with the white star. And then again, the red one, we use the blue raffia. And now we'll take our wood burning tool, which you can purchase now at the Dollar Tree for $5. And we're just going to slowly work our way through the ends of the star, one on each side of the bow. And this will be where we add the hanger. So now taking that automotive style wire that we found at the Dollar Tree, it comes in a three pack with two rolls of black one roll of red. It's got like this vinyl coating over the wire. We're going to take about a 12 inch piece of that wire and then we're going to wrap it e around either the dowel rod or a pencil. And you want to make sure that you leave about an inch and a half of the wire on either end that is not curled around the dowel rod. And that will be where we attach it to our star. If you start to run out of room on the dowel rod, you can just slide the coil down. And once you have the coil done, you take your straight edge and you're going to slide it from the back to the front and then wrap it around that wire a few times and then just leave that excess there while you work on the other side again from the back to the front. And then wrap the wire as close as you can to the part where it starts to curl at. And of course, you're still going to have these straight pieces at the end. Now, if you want, you can just go ahead and cut the wire off. What I chose to do is I take the dowel rod and I'll just curl that little end and then push it down so the coil is right in front of the hole that we burned through the wood. And then just adjust the hanger. And then you can, of course, curl the other side. And we'll do the same exact method for all three of our stars. This is a very simple craft, but it's so fun and so cute when they're done. I absolutely love them. You can hang them anywhere. You can hang them from a wreath, a doorknob, a little hook. You could put a magnet on the back if you wanted and put it on the refrigerator. There's so many options that you could use these stars for. Lots of fun to make. And very simple. Hope you guys enjoy those. Now for our second project today. The supplies we're going to need are one of these double layered stars from Dollar Tree, one of the small miniature stars, also we're going to use two of these small wood cubes, and one of the drawers. We're also going to use one star left over from the garland from the craft last week, the Dollar Tree patriotic napkins and the raffia, also some red, white, and blue paint, the furniture scratch markers and whichever color you choose, paint brushes. We're going to need a dotting tool, some Mod Podge, and scissors, hot glue, a lighter. You'll need some water for safety. This is optional. Also, you'll need one of the small glass DIY figurines that you can get from the Dollar Tree. So let's get crafty. The first thing we're going to do is take our Mod Podge, the small drawer, and the napkin. We're going to take that napkin and pull off that back layer. We do not need it. And then cut our napkin right along the crease. We'll go ahead and cut the two pieces apart and we'll use both pieces for this bottom portion of the drawer. Now just taking your Mod Podge, you're going to lightly brush a thin coat of Mod Podge on two of the squares that are side by side. Make sure you get that corner because we're going to be wrapping the napkin around the corner. 
Again, not too thick. You don't want to cause the napkin to wrinkle unnecessarily. Now just take your napkin and lay it on top of the wood and slowly rub your finger across the top of it, smoothing out any wrinkles or bubbles. And once you get it adjusted the way you like and all the bubbles and wrinkles out, just flip it over and keep working your way around the corner. And now we have two sides covered. We'll do the exact same thing to the other sides and then a small square for the bottom. But all you're going to do now is just trim off the excess with your scissors. Continue to smooth out any bubbles or wrinkles that might have appeared and then you can use some sandpaper and emery board. You could use a sanding block to fix the edges. Just make sure you trim off the majority with your scissors first. If the napkin feels a little wet and it feels like it wants to tear while you are using the sandpaper, then you can just take a lighter along the edge and it will burn that little excess off and create a really nice crisp edge. Always have water nearby though, just in case for you know, safety reasons. So that's the first one done. Now we're going to take this star. We're going to cut it apart and just use the center. We're going to attach the napkin to the front and to the back of the star. So again, we're just going to use some Mod Podge. We'll do the front first, a thin coat of the Mod Podge. We're not gonna worry about the edges though. We can paint those or color those in with the scratch marker. Then just take your one layer of napkin like we did for the base and we're going to lay that over top of the star and work out any bubbles, wrinkles, and creases. Then use your scissors to cut off the excess. And then next we will take either the sandpaper or our lighter and we will use that to get a nice crisp edge along our star. So I'm going to use the lighter method. As you can see, the flame just kind of travels around the star. It eventually burns out, which is normal, so you'll have to light it again, but just be careful with this part. You don't want to um, burn yourself or catch anything else on fire. So just be mindful that you're working with open flames, so always have that water there as a safety. And this is a really fun, quick way to get those edges done and not have to wait for the napkin to dry. Sometimes working with the napkin, it makes it hard to sand the edges just because it tends to be um, still wet a little bit if you don't wait for it to completely dry and then it wants to tear. So don't forget to decorate the back as well. And now we'll start layering our stars. So we're going to take that extra star left over from last week's project where we did the garland and we are going to glue that right to the center of our flag star and then take one of the small wood stars and glue that to the center. We have this really cute layered look and we're going to give it a rustic feel by taking some raffia and creating this X pattern over top of the star. Now take your ends and bring those to the front and you're going to slide the raffia underneath of the X pattern that you made that will help hold it in place and then you don't really need any extra glue. So just slide under each section and that gets the ribbon in the front or the raffia in the front and then you can go ahead and tie this in a knot and cut off any excess. Then you're left with, um, if you leave a little bit of the tails there once you cut it, you're left with this um, kind of rustic bow. She can leave these tails as long or as short as you like. And then just adjust them so they lay nicely. Here's what it looks like so far. Now we're going to take the large outside portion of that star hanger from Dollar Tree and we're going to use the walnut scratch marker to stain it. You can use other stain or paint, it's really up to you, but I wanted to use the scratch markers. They're fun to use in craft projects. Um, when you get about halfway done with the star, it feels like the marker is drying out, even a brand new one. So sometimes it's best to pause for just a minute, put the lid on and let it kind of catch up, um, putting more of the dye or the ink down into the end of the marker. Sometimes it's just really sucking up the um, stains. So you want to give it a minute to play catch up. So we stained the front and the back of the star using the exact same color.
And you might need to go over some areas twice just so you don't end up with those lines where you've overlapped. Okay, so this doesn't take any drying time at all. So once you've colored the front, the back, and the edges, then you're ready to glue the stars that we just made to the tops. So you're just going to add some glue to the top peak of the star. And then go ahead and line your stars up. I left a little bit of the brown showing at the top. And I like the way that that looks there. So now we're going to take the drawer from that miniature box and we're going to glue it in so that the um, butterfly is down towards the bottom and that will keep that in. And we're just basically creating a stand. I'm taking that same walnut scratch marker and I'm just filling in the edge and the top portion here with the marker. I did two coats of it and that coordinates with the star. We're also going to take two of those small wood cubes and we're going to color those with the stain marker as well. Glue your star to the base and then take the two small squares that you stained and glue those to the back of the star and the base to help give it a little bit more stability and just make it more secure so it doesn't fall off. Now we're going to paint our gnome to put on our star base. We're taking that Tuscan red and we're going to do the brim of his hat. Don't forget to do the bottom portion right up against where his beard is. And then you'll paint the nose, whichever flesh color you would like to use. For the hat, we're going to use the English Navy Blue by Apple Barrel. So I first do the whole coat of blue paint. It still looked a little bit light to me, so I added a little bit more in some spots, but I didn't really care if it was, um, you know, perfect looking because I liked the little bit lighter spots. It helped to see the um, kind of bends in the folds in the hat that were already naturally there from the mold that they used. And now we'll paint his sleeves the same color blue. These are really well made, so it makes it easy with a small paintbrush to be able to follow the lines and have a pretty crisp edge without taping it off or anything like that. For the beard, we're going to paint that white. And then his mittens, we painted those red, the same color red that we used for the brim of the hat. Once we have... Um, the beard in white will let that dry add a few little lines to the hat to help see the folds a little bit better and then we take a dry brush with just a tiny tiny little bit of gray paint and lightly brush across the beard to add those 3d kind of looking appearance with the gray and I take my dotting tool and just add some details to the brim of the hat and the cuffs of the sleeves also, I'm taking the same dotting tool and just drawing little tiny stars on the top of the hat. Just a few. I think I did three on the front and three on the back. And then we'll just let him dry. And once he's dry, he's ready to go. And to attach him to the base, we are just going to use the same hot glue we used for the rest of the project and glue him right to the center. And that is our gnome stand. So cute. I love how this turned out. Super easy to make. And now for our third project, we're going to go kind of quickly with this one. We're going to take some Dollar Tree flowers, the Django blocks, a star. We're also going to use this DIY project that you can color and some clothespins that we're going to pull apart. A little bit of craft sponge or bath sponge cut up, some gel stain. And then you could either use the scratch markers or the scorching tool. Uh, marker that you can get at Hobby Lobby. It's really up to you. Also this patriotic ribbon and twine. We'll need some hot glue and some scissors. So let's get crafty. This one's really easy. So we're going to go kind of quick. So I'm using the scorch pen, which I used in a craft video two weeks ago. I invite you to go check that out. I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. You just color in where you want to have a wood burn look and then you use a heat tool or an iron to darken the spots that you color. If you don't have a scorch pen, that's where those scratch markers come in play. You can use those to fill in the dark colors like the mahogany 
and that will work really well to get the same kind of color effect and then once you stain the whole entire top it will look pretty close to what this looks like when we're done so that's just an option for you if you don't have the scorch pen it's another way that you can get this look pretty similar using a different item from the dollar tree then i use the markers that came with the mason jar and i just fill in the letters and a few spots on the stars to get a little bit more detail then taking a gel stain by rust-oleum i picked this up at dollar tree about a year or so ago and we're just going to use the bath sponge to add a little bit of that stain onto our wood let it dry and then take some twine and wrap that around the top portion a few times to decorate the top of our mason jar we'll tie that off in a knot and add some glue to keep it in place and then we need a way to attach these flowers so after we glue the stars over top of the stars that were there i just like that 3d look i took these clothespins apart glue them to the back and this gives me something to glue these flowers to because i had already taken them off the stem from a different project that i had done so i'm able to use the clothespins to kind of layer these flowers, a few bows in the front, and then I had some flowers with stems that I was able to tuck down behind the clothespin in the back, and that helped give it that layered look where the flowers are higher at the top, and a few ribbon pieces as well, and then the darker flowers at the bottom. So you just keep filling it in with flowers. Once you're done, I covered the back up with some ribbon just to hide the clothespins to make it look a little bit neater. Then I paint the whole back of the mason jar Tuscan red to cover up the writing that's on the back. Then I'll take two of those tower blocks. I'll glue those to the back bottom portion of our mason jar once the paint has dried. And then I will paint these blocks red to blend in. And that will be the stand to hold up our mason jar. And that's it. Our whole project is done super quick and easy. Now for our fourth and final project today, the supplies we'll need is a self-adhesive wall tile. We're going to use this um, star as a template. Also, we'll need pencil, some paint. We're going to be needing the sponge to paint our stars with and a pool noodle. We're also going to need a dowel rod or some skewers. We'll need the wood mini stars, some sandpaper or an emery board, twine, we're also going to use the patriotic ribbon again and some greenery. We're also going to use this vase. I picked that up at Dollar Tree a few months ago. Some scissors and hot glue. So let's get crafty with our final project. We're going to take the star apart and just use the larger star as a template for our stars that we're going to cut out of this wall tile. Using a Sharpie or a pencil, just trace around the inside portion of the star and we can get three out of one tile. I tried to get four, but it was just a tad too big. So that was fine. Three worked out because I got all of the colors I wanted. Now just take your scissors and cut the edge off of your tile. That'll help you get your hands underneath the adhesive back to remove it because we do not need that for this project. But you can hold on to the adhesive back. You can use it in another project to make something stick to something else. So go ahead and hold on to that. Now with your scissors, you'll cut around the two star shapes. We're going to draw our third star that will fit on our wall tile. I'm still trying to figure out how to get more than three, but three really just seemed to push it. Um, or four was going to push it, so I just did the three. And when you cut your stars out, I want you to notice how I turn the star not the scissors. If you take the scissors and you keep trying to turn them around the corners, you're going to split this plastic and it's just going to rip. So definitely turn what you're cutting instead of trying to force the scissors into the corners. Now that we have all three stars cut out, we're going to take three small pieces of that bath sponge from Dollar Tree and we'll use those to paint our stars. The coloring we're going to use is this chalk paint by Folk Art. It's called Cottage White. And then we're also going to use the apple barrel paint. You can pick that up at Hobby Lobby, sometimes Dollar Tree and Walmart. We're using the Tuscan Red and also the English Navy. That would be our dark blue. And we just need a little bit of paint, as you can see here. A little goes a long way. And we're just going to dab the color on top of our star. I start with a thin coat for the first coat. And then I do go back in and do a second coat 
because I know I want to sand the top portions where you can see the decoration on the star. And I want to make sure that the rest of it is nice and dark so that the lighter lines when I sand it will pop off of that background. So definitely do two coats if it looks a little bit too light to you. The white one I don't think matters as much since it's a chalk paint. It's already pretty thick, so I did just do one coat of paint using the white chalk paint. But the red and blue apropos paint, I did do two coats. And it's up to you if you want to paint the back of your stars or not. I did not paint mine. I was afraid if I flipped it over and tried to paint the back that I would mess up the front and that it would scratch the paint off. So I chose just to leave mine white. So all three stars are done. We'll let them dry. And then we're going to take this diamond emery board from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to slowly go over those detail lines in the wall tile. I notice when I rush, they don't look as good. If I really take my time and go over each line, that's why I like the emery board. It gives you a lot more control over the detail of where you're sanding at. Then it definitely gives you a much nicer look. So as you sand over top of it, you slowly get these fun detailed lines to pop off of that dark background. There's our red star all finished. Now we'll do the blue. I really love the blue. I think this one pops the most, but I love how these turn out. I think the look is so fun. It's got kind of like that Americana country look, but still modern at the same time. See how you can go over the line so much easier with the nail file. If you were using just a traditional piece of sandpaper, I think it would be difficult to really guide it and go over just the details. So we do all three, then I made these small little twine bows just by wrapping them around my finger, creating a loop and tying them off in the middle. And I use a different color for each of the um, stars here. They're red, white, and blue. Then I take that same uh, baker's twine and regular twine from the nautical section at Dollar Tree. And these wood skewers or dowel rods, you wanna put a little bit of glue on them and then wrap the sticks with the twine or baker's twine. And you can go pretty far down. We are going to cut these, but we're going to like glue where we're going to cut them at so we don't have to worry about the ribbon coming off. So just glue them to the back like you're making a popsicle or a little magic wand. Take some greenery. If you like, this part of course is optional and glue the greenery to the stars. I did them a little bit different for each one. To so the blue star, I glue the greenery to the bottom. I just did two small sprigs. And I chose to put these at the bottom of this star. I do each one just a little bit different. So the red star, I'm going to add some greenery to the top right under the bow. And now we're going to take a pool noodle. We cut the center out to make it a little bit smaller around and then tie it with some twine. And this is going to help it to fit into our vase. It's so much easier than trying to cut some floral wire down. So you just cut the center piece of that pool noodle out and then pull it together to make it a smaller circumference. And now it's the perfect size to slide down into our vase. It's a nice tight fit so I know that it's going to hold our skewers with our stars on top. I measure to see how far I wanna cut this down because I wanna put these at different layers. So as you can see, I go around this skewer using some hot glue and that's gluing that um, twine to the skewer so I can go ahead and cut this down. To cut these skewers, I use dog nail clippers. They are perfect for cutting um, dowel rods and the wood skewers. Then you save your scissors. So we're just going to slide this one down in the middle. The other two, I'll keep cutting them down to different sizes once I figure out how long I want them to be. And then we'll poke those down into the red pool noodle. 
I take some of the greenery. It looks kind of like a eucalyptus or a boxwood. And we'll just keep filling this in around the stars until we've filled it in so it looks like a nice flower arrangement and filled in around the base so we no longer see the red pool noodle. You could also use Spanish moss here around the base. That would work to cover up the pool noodle as well. You would just need to use more hot glue. And I do add a little bit of hot glue to each of the flowers just to make sure they stay in place. And keep filling it in around the front and the back. And now we'll take a piece of ribbon I have this star ribbon here from Dollar Tree. We'll put a little bit of glue on our vase and then wrap the bow really tight around the center of the vase and glue it down. And we'll cut off any excess that we have where it's overlapping. So I wanna make sure that the seam is in the back. And now we're going to take some Baker's twine. I wrap that around the center of our ribbon or our bow that we just put on here. And we're going to make a very simple bow. I ended up layering it. So I made a few more um, small bows and I just kept gluing them on top until I had a little bit thicker in the center here, just because it's not as rigid as the uh, regular twine, like the jute twine, which will stand up a little bit better. So I added just a few more pieces to make it a little bit more rigid. I stain a small star with the paint marker or the stain marker and then glue that to the middle of our bow. And that's it for this project. I think this one is definitely my favorite. The pictures do not do it justice. It is absolutely gorgeous. These were so much fun to make. I hope you guys enjoyed all these videos and craft ideas. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And here are some other videos from our channel you might also enjoy. Have a lovely day and I'll see you next time.